Yeah. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us on this, this episode again. Great to be here tonight. Uh, I really hope that you can take a lot out of this episode. So tonight, I'm here with Coffee. How you doing tonight, man? I'm great, man. How you doing today? Good. What it's good easy. to have you here. Um, excited to get into this. A master producer, mixer, engineer. Just, I'm super excited for y'all to be able to hear this look into the industry. So before every episode, I like to show sort of a sample of some of a creative or an artist's work to let you know, to give you an insight into who they are, show you a little bit about what they make, so it can give you some perspective on the rest of the interview. Hmm. So that's about a play now. If you'd like to skip that and just get straight to the interview to us talking, the time code is going to be on screen now. It's also going to be in the chapter markers at the bottom of the video. We'll see ya. What you seeing at the bottom? Only difference in the bottom and the top is you just got an extra option. When you at the top, you probably got it all, but you could lose it all tomorrow. I'm at home on a Saturday evening, rolling up watching shotters. Many niggas, they swear that they fly when I'm really the fuel inside the rocket. Yeah, I wake up every day and thank the Lord I ain't got a bit of baby mama. Yeah, man, I'm self-employed. I will never go and get a job at McDonald's. I'd rather risk it all, everything that I got, make the money off the corner. I stay on the move, I don't have to worry about the police ever coming. Say them one call away, yeah. Say them one call away. I'm one call away, yeah. Hey, baby, you a blessing. Drop a lot of money on the net. I like to do it cause you're special. Anytime I get a little extra, I'ma break you off and make them jealous. I ain't worried about the next one. Send a couple pictures when we texting. Yeah, I hope a couple of them they got me feeling like future on some love and affection. Yeah, I'm at the studio, I'll be done in a second. Don't want you to go, don't wanna leave. Don't wanna leave. And we're back. Boom. So, Coffee Man, can you, for everybody here, can you give us a little background on a little short explanation of what you do? Um, I'm a sound engineer uh, and a producer. <clears throat> uh, I make my own music too, but I primarily engineer music and I make beats. And I like to help artists develop what they have going on because everybody deserves a chance to be able to be the best at what they can do. And if somebody sees that they can do it, they should be able to help them out too. You know, so that's really my thing. Hell yeah, man. Producing the engineer. Yeah. So we're in Hawaii right now. Where are you from? I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, they call it Trey, the Trey. Trey 4, 34th District. But yeah, uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 336. Hmm. Yeah. So what got you started mm. doing all this in life? Mm. Um, I've always been into music. I've always been, like, I listened to the Rugrats, um, and we had a piano at home. I listened to that, tried to go play it on the piano, re replay what I hear. And that has been something I've always been pretty good at is duplicating sound. And i just been into music all my life. And there again, I guess kind of formally trained, like I was saying before, uh, singing. So I'm good at three-part harmony. I play the bass guitar. I play the drums and the piano. And, I'm, you know, I guess anything you can think of as far as music is concerned, I can about do it. But those are the things I'm primarily best at. Hmm. Mm. So I really have never, I, I interview artists and musicians, rappers, all that, but I really honestly don't even know that much about music. Yeah. What, what does three-part harmony mean? Okay. Three-part harmony is where, let's just say one, I sing one note. Uh, you, got, you have a higher and a lower, or you have, it's, it's two other parts to whatever you're singing. 
So if you were singing one part, just imagine duplicating yourself two times, and one of you is singing above one note, and a person is singing below the main note. Oh shit! Yeah. So it's it's like painting with three colors. Uh, if there, yeah. I put it in the colors. How about that? Yeah. It's just like um, painting with red, and then adding blue and green. Hmm. You know, versus just painting with red. Yeah. Yeah. So. Where would you say you're at in terms of level of development in your career right now? Um, under success and over failure, right in the middle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I was going to say anything like that, uh, I'm very happy with where I am uh, because I've taken a lot of time to develop a good name for myself uh, and a good product to be able to offer people. Yeah. So... I think yeah, I'm I'm very happy with where I am. Definitely to say that I've been able to move to Hawaii off of you know making beats, uh, you know being a sound engineer, recording music, you know, hmm. uh, because I wasn't yeah. formally I didn't go to school to be a sound engineer. I just learned how to do it, and then yeah. you know YouTube University is free. Go there, I support it, and anything hmm. you want to learn, you know, I just went there, or it was more trial and error. Yeah, so yeah, but. I'm in between success and failure, and I'm closer to success than I am failure. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. I'm happy. I fuck with hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy. So, I don't want you to worry about being humble or anything like that, because I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to brag or anything like that. <laughs> the question I am going to ask you is, what would you say is, like, your most proud achievements in this career my most proud achievement is to be able to do what i want when i get ready you know what i mean um and when i say that i can set up my own schedule um i can charge what i want for but what i'm doing the service that i'm providing is engineering selling beats um mixing and artist development so those are the most important things that i believe that i have that are an asset for me i guess yeah and um what was the question again what are you most proud about? And okay, I'll and, say that. Like, I'm, what, what, because you, when you think about it and when it happened, what had you the most geeked? What had me the most moving out here to Hawaii? <laughs> that, that's that's I absolutely say that because today I'm gonna say it for today. Yeah. I yeah. was um, riding to go meet. I call him Ump. You know he he he's uh, definitely a benefactor in what I have going on. He's helping me with anything that I need. He sees that I'm self-driven so he doesn't mind yeah putting in and um i was going to go see him today and just riding and looking at you can see the beach you can see pearl harbor you can see the mountains you can see the it's so much you can look at that you don't get yeah. to normally see and to think that i did all of that off of where i first started you know a lot of people don't always believe in what you're doing yeah they don't always see the same thing that you see so sometimes mm. it's kind of it makes you feel like a failure. Okay, like my uh, homecoming just came up. My I guess like our twentieth anniversary. Yeah, 20th, yeah. I guess what I think I don't know how you even say that, but I've always been fearful of being uh, the bum or yeah, the guy valid. that yeah the guy that yeah, comes I there that, that don't have anything to show for. Out of all of this time you've been out of school, you don't got nothing to show for. I, I've always feared that, but I can say that doing this is something that has been absolutely my proudest moment yeah yeah i can say that yeah that's awesome mm -hmm. so did you ever believe that you would make it to where you are now no i mean i had a, i always had that hope and that dream but there again you I had to be realistic with myself and understand that you can hope and dream all day. You can think about it, but if you're not willing to put in the work, yeah, you're not going to get it. I don't care what it is. You got to really be willing to put in the time and the work. And I sacrificed a lot of different things. You know, um, most people my age, they got at least one kid. They probably married. They got a house. They got, they got, you know, probably a 750 credit score not not everybody I, I don't really think that but i would assume you know people are yeah. in, a, in a lot better position you know um but doing what i've been doing sometimes i don't know 
I don't know how I'm going to get anything done. I don't know how I'm going to get to Hawaii. I don't know how I'm going to do. I just don't know sometimes how stuff is going to happen, but it happens. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, I don't know. I about, I about lost what I was going to say, but. Yeah. Hmm. So, you're having fun with it, though? Uh, yeah. Being, I, uh, yeah, I can really do exactly what I want to do. Um, the reason why it's the most fun, I'll say, is there again what i'm doing is more of a service like i get all of the stuff that i'm supposed to get back in return through the universe or however that stuff kind of you know really works um like there again if i see an artist needs some help and i know for a fact i can help them and then i do that to see how happy it makes them when they hear what we've done that they need help on yeah it it makes me feel a whole lot better about myself. You know, I'm not trying to take advantage of people and yeah. take, I don't want to charge a person a thousand dollars and give them $10 worth of work. Yeah. Facts. You know, you know, so, and I would never be like that with anybody, but let's just say I were to charge a thousand dollars. I wouldn't want to be that person to charge a, a high amount, a number and give you a low amount of service. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah, that's, those are my proud moments moving out here and being able to help people and see the reaction to, how it helps them hmm. and how they i don't know how i would say that i guess how that it, it just helps them yeah you know? that's interesting i feel like a lot of people in any type of similar artistic field a lot of people might not have so much of a thought about i have a service to other people and love the fact that they can do that for other people so i feel like that's telling and you know regardless people who make any type of who are in any similar field to you they're going to be doing a service for people you know right. just because that's a fact of the matter but i feel like it's telling that that's the first thing that you went to and you said it, i think twice now in the interview about and even before yeah, yeah. The, even before the interview about how you like having the service there yeah um you were yeah. telling yeah before i even started shooting you were talking about how you love how you and jacoby are able to do that for the people out here <laughs> um how you and jacoby are able to sometimes you think undercharge and overgive mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that being a point mm -hmm. of pride for mm -hmm. you mm-hmm that's really that's what's going on and and i i enjoy doing that because i'm i'm not losing yeah i'm, I'm not losing bro well, what a, <laughs> if somebody could show me where i'm losing or show me what it is that i'm doing that's really wrong show me just mm. show me yeah you know what i mean because there again if i would have had somebody around like me okay let's put it into perspective like this this was my experience i wanted to be a producer i mean a sound engineer i already knew how to make beats i was good at doing that still good at doing that um but i asked the guy i was like man how, how do you do that how do you engineer oh it's just the sauce i was like oh oh it's just the sauce okay so that means indirectly you're not gonna tell me what okay so from that day it put like a chip on my shoulder yeah and mm, <laughs> that it, it lit a fire and it put a chip on my shoulder yeah and in that same group of people it was another person he was like uh okay i was in there making beats one day randomly and this is how i learned how to become an engineer random if yeah. you're gonna if you're gonna do it you're gonna take um opportunity whenever it comes you know yeah. no matter what the situation is and that was me so the guy ran in he was like hey man this is my homeboy his name is doom doom by the way shout out doom and uh he was like uh hey man you trying to uh you trying to run a session bro me i'm like shit yeah i'm trying to run a session <laughs> All right, all right. So look, this is what you do, man. All right, you uh, this is how you pull up the program. Uh, this is how you uh, <laughs> cut on the mic. Uh, this is what you whenever you know drag and drop. Uh, all right, you got it. I'm like, uh, that's him teaching you. The session about to come in in five <laughs> minutes. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. All I, all I'm trying to remember is drag and drop, drag and drop, duplicate, drag and drop. I'm like, okay. So the session comes in. And first, it's like about six people. I'm thinking yeah. it's one person coming in. It's Damn. like a group of people that always come in. And so they used to, the, to you know, my homie, and he always, he, he's super efficient. And he's like my mentor. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 
I'm thinking that it's one person coming in. It's going to be pretty simple. It's not going to be too hard. Man, it's six people coming in. Everybody got two or three blunts in their hand. Everybody Damn. light up. Everybody got bottles of liquor. Everybody's ready to have a good time. Lo and behold, they got a, a, a engineer that really don't know what he's doing. <laughs> and I'm in there shaking in my boots, you know. But I'm not. I'm not. How old were you at this time? I was like 22. <laughs> 20, yeah, 22. Yeah. yeah, I was 22. Yeah. And everything was going smooth. I got them, you know, I was kind of recording slow. Like anybody that records with me now, they'll talk about how fast I record, how fast I move, how fast I get stuff done. And um, at that time, there again, this is my training day. Yeah. I was moving very slow. I didn't know what to do. Then Valid. the dude started asking, hey, man, you know how to cut, chop the beat? You know how to put the beat underwater? I'm like, put the beat under <laughs> water? What, uh, what is that? Let me try to call. I'm trying to call my homeboy, yeah. and he ain't picking yeah. up. Oh, God. oh man, <laughs> bro, it's the worst situation ever. So and that was your first time. I'm sweating. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, this is my first experience, and I don't know if if I ever told them that that's how bad the session was, but there it is. <laughs> 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 man, it was crazy, man. But I got through the session, and I actually still work with those artists today. Yeah, I have an opportunity. Like if they ever want to run a session, that I still get you know calls from them, and for them to be able man. to see the progress from day one to now, it, it makes me feel good. You yeah, know? I bet. So, yeah, I, that's why I really go out of my way to make sure that people know what they're doing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah but that experience there taught me a lot very quickly yeah do they know how new you were at the time do they know now <laughs> they, they they knew it as soon as I, they got to ask as soon as they start asking questions they, they can know tell. It, but they knew it they knew it they knew it they were like, man like man so can you uh you know how to chop the voice you know how to chop my voice and uh make it uh i said no nah, i'm not to do all of that i just started then you could tell everybody in the room was like uh, <laughs> no, like, yeah, uh, man we ready to go man we Damn. They didn't. They didn't do that. But you can. Oh, yeah. you can feel the energy yeah. shift in the room. You yeah. know. So I had. It, it was one of them kind of situations. But I vowed to the Lord that I never ever had that situation happen again. Yeah. Never happened again. And I'm just glad that it's been yeah. progress, and I haven't let that stop me from yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah, I've had. I've had so many situations like that. Whether it be in front of people, shooting maybe like a music video or something, or or an episode of this. Mm. Or whether it be in editing and I release it and I look back on what I released or gave to them and I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I sent that to them. Or oh, I wait, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Is this a good damn or a bad damn? No, bad damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or like shooting a music video, like, because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing yeah, when I started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, yeah. You gotta start somewhere. Let's go. And then like, I, I shoot maybe after a day <laughs> and then I go to edit the footage and I'm like, how Damn. This is horrible. I'm like, let me try to find a good couple seconds of yeah. everything I shot. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard. But there, Oof. I've had that bad experience too because I've yeah. tried to shoot videos. I have the experience of shooting videos, but I'm nowhere. I, I'm not a videographer. I've done it well enough to people to you know to where the people are asking or the artists that I work with. Some, hey man, you shooting videos? Uh, you yeah. mind shooting? How much you charging to shoot a video? Now, if I want to be a money hog. <laughs> I could go out there and be like, oh, and I would have made a whole lot. I would have shot a whole lot more videos. But yeah. I'm not, you know, for the videos that I have, I, I haven't charged any money because yeah. there again, it's not my profession or my skill. I'm going to do it just because I'm yeah. working on something. And if you like the product, then you got it. Yeah. But for sound engineering and stuff that I really am, I know what I'm doing. I need just a little bit of pay for that because I'm going to make yeah. sure that you sound as best as possible. But, yeah. you know. Just like with your product, I got to tell you on camera, if nobody else has told you your um, what you're doing with this podcast and what you were doing, what you everything is 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 dope as hell. And hey, I appreciate it. You need to put like the applause shit. That, yeah, <laughs> like a laugh. Yeah, track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need, no, you need to put the, the, the clap, the applause track on there behind you. You know what I'm saying? Give yourself a pat on the back because I appreciate this it. This shit is dope, bro. And I thank gotta, you. I'm, oh, I really appreciate it, man, that, bro. Yeah. And, yeah, it's super fun. Yeah. It, it, it's like you said um as i get better at this mm -hmm. it's so fun to be mm -hmm. able to shoot with people and 
you know, for some people, give them their first interview, mm-hmm. first music video, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then every time I learn something or every time I improve, mm-hmm. then how much more meaningful it is after that to be able to give people a better product. Right. Absolutely. It's awesome. That. And then also, the, I think, the okay, the biggest thing that I enjoy, too, about being able to come out here is establishing relationships with people you know having the relationship established with a person always yeah. makes a situation a whole lot yeah better or worse um because it can go one of two ways but you know establishing relationships out here on the island from the short period of time that i've been here technically um it's a whole lot easier to do out here people are very very much more likely to come ask you what you do or just you know buy your drink at the bar and start yeah. a general conversation with you and then you know y'all the yeah. best friends by the next week you know because <laughs> y'all have so much in common and it's not like not really necessarily seeking something out of somebody but y'all yeah. have the same like common goals so yeah you know mm-hmm. but yeah so how many places have you worked as far as like studios or like different states and cities and different state cities like geographical areas mm, i've been just all in the u.s I, I haven't traveled outside of the u.s yet it's on my list to do yeah. uh, but i've gone to about seven states so far i ain't gonna say a lot but i've gone to about about seven states uh the most consistent places i've gone to uh here california yeah um atlanta uh south carolina uh, obviously in north carolina and Col- colorado did i say colorado i don't think so colorado and those six i'll say six i'll yeah. say six you know so those are the places that i've been the most consistent hmm. but i want to i want to go anywhere i can go i would yeah. like to go to detroit to make music in detroit yeah because that that scene and the way that they're making music is pretty dope yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so working in all those different areas and all the different kind of like many cultures within the different states and (laughs) cities and all the different music scenes Mm -hmm. within each place Mm -hmm. what has that kind of shown you um it's a market for everything it's absolutely a market for everything I've heard there again, you have, you got vulgar rap where people want to hear nasty lyrics. You have people that want to hear feel good music. You got people that want to be in love. You got people that want to, you know, be rock stars. You got, it's, it's, it's a, it's something for everybody, yeah. you know? Um, so just depending on where you are, it's just going to determine what's around you. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like it, but yeah where you are is going to determine what is most popular around you and from from there like the music i listen to in north carolina is not really my the, my most favorite like i was saying again i like how detroit music yeah just because of the way that they rap it's the style that they yeah. have um i like people that rap in texas you know i like west coast music yeah um i like reggae music mm. Um, I like R&B music to a degree. I don't like to get too lovey-dovey, but, <laughs> you know, and I'm not one of those sad boys. I do not like sad boy crying yeah. music. Like, I, it's nothing wrong with it, but it's too much going on in life that we can be talking about that's happy, you know. Yeah. Uh, or you can at least talk about it to want it. You can be sad by yourself somewhere else. I feel like you should express your feelings always, but I don't like to hear consistent sad music all the mm. time. You know? Yeah. But... Mm valid Mm. yeah so what have been some of your story time Mm -hmm. what's been some of the most fun experiences you've had (laughs) fun or or wild anything (laughs) Uh, all the different places recording that you can say on camera (laughs) (laughs) i can say everything i I, I can say everything on camera i haven't been too too crazy (laughs) um there again i like to i like to have fun within reason i don't like to go go too wild um but the first time I had an opportunity to go to Atlanta, yeah. There again, I was with this group called Chop House, and we went to Atlanta to street execs, and that was my first time ever being around a celebrity. I was around uh, what's his name, Trinidad James. I was around mm. Trinidad James, yeah. like on the stage with him, uh, 
when he was when that gold all on my chain that song was it was i guess it was really like out he was he was famous for the song already yeah. uh first time being in the room with two chains uh Damn. yeah first yeah, time first time yeah it, i've it say not it, been a lot again first okay, time okay 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 first not, time not a lot you know and not like i'm in there hanging out <laughs> with him more than once yeah 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 Damn. yeah but there again i'm just i'm just a speck of dust in the room in comparison to what's going on you know so and it's not like i'm having the opportunity to to talk to him and, hey two chains i'm coffee man hey check out my beats you know it, it's nothing like that so but still, to be able to have that experience, to see those kind of people that close, it, it made me understand that uh, this shit is real. I, I could really, if That's I crazy. do it, yeah, d- depending on the relationships that you're building and how you build those relationships are going to determine what direction you're going to be able to take yourself in. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. And the most substantial artist that I was around at that time for me, his name is Bank Row, or was Bank Row Fresh, R.I.P. Bank Row Fresh. Um I actually was able to be in the studio and watch him record in the booth. Damn. I shook his hand, told him that that shit was hard, bro. You know, and I didn't I didn't even know who the hell he was. I ain't know who I was talking to. I ain't Yeah. I thought he was just some random guy came to rap, you know. But uh that that was I guess if I could give you story time, that's really like one of the most eventful things for me. Yeah. Yeah, and to see that you can really be around celebrities. Celebrity celebrities ain't that hard to get in contact with if you have the right thing to offer and you're doing the right yeah doing the right thing there mm-hmm. again relationships i don't know how many times you hear me say it but relationships really really make a difference in where you go and how you go there huh mm-hmm. interesting mm-hmm. so how do how does skill and then the ability or the personality type that lets you build relationships how do those two work together is one more important than the other or what boy like you ask some good questions you ask some <laughs> great questions okay this is something that i explained to jacoby very thoroughly yeah one thing that's great about him and i saw with him is the fact that he interacts very well with people yeah. Now, you can have the best business, you can have the best whatever, the best service to offer, but if you don't know how to talk to people, if mm. you don't know how to treat yeah. people, you ain't going to be floating for long. Yeah. And that's a raft with a with a hole in it. You know, it's just a matter of time for you in the water, man. Mm. And I've watched I've watched the person. I watch people, not just one. When I sit here and think about that, I've watched people destroy like their own business and their own opportunity to make something a whole lot better for themselves just because they're they're an asshole oh he's Damn. cool man oh, oh he he's cool i like his work man his work is great but he's an asshole damn damn so that's why i was saying earlier like i've been really really focused on making sure when people talk about me your reputation is very important and I don't want to tarnish my relation or my relationship with people and tarnish my name before I get an opportunity to really do something, you know. Yeah. And it takes a long time to really get there. Honestly, if you work in a regular nine to five and then you're trying to hustle and do this kind of stuff, it's rough because you dealing with realistic. You got to really be focused on maintaining that nine to five, making sure you ain't messing up at work, making sure that all of these bills here are paid, making yeah. sure you can eat. It's a lot to make sure before you even get to creating. Yeah. You know, so that's why I've taken a, it's hard sometimes. So you got to find that balance. But yeah, you have to be a great person with a great personality. You have to be able to, again, be a very helpful person and an honest person. Yeah. That's something too. You got to be honest. You got to be very um personable. Like you got to be able to interact with people and let them know that you can be comfortable around me and i i'm go i have your best interest at yeah. your heart you know hmm. yeah so those things work hand in hand you got to have both hmm. okay two questions mm-hmm. one question one statement <laughs> sorry okay. let me rephrase that okay first i as you were saying that i was picturing when when you first came in Took a seat and everything. We're just chatting mm-hmm. before the interview. Mm-hmm. One thing I noticed was that you are, uh, you were 
actively and it seemed like purposefully listen i was talking and and i i'm sure if you've listened to any of this you know or any episodes or anything you know i talk a lot and most of it's bullshit (laughs) if you're listening and and i and I i just say a lot yeah once i start talking it's hard for me to shut up i'll do the same thing um but i noticed that as i was doing that and it's it's whatever talk 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 i talk talk. you know i I talk a lot yeah you were very actively and more in better word purposely listening yeah like pay attention yeah paying attention active being active about it Mm -hmm. it was like i I looked at you and i was like oh shit i can i feel like i can see in his brain right now he's actively listening (laughs) and and that's something i respect (laughs) yeah there again too it it seemed like it was like a choice to actively listen which i respect so much yeah and you You know people pick up on it yeah people really pick up on it man i can see here right now i can tell somebody i can still i can be in my phone and you talk to me right now i can be sitting here doing this and you still talk to me we had the same conversation and i can actively still pay attention to what you do it's taking the time for me to be able to do yeah. this let me tell you this now but being able to engineer i can listen to somebody and still focus on what i'm doing so yeah. but you can tell when the person is not paying attention to what you're yeah. talking about and they don't have anything else to kind of put back into what you're talking about so yeah and it leaves a lot of dead space in the air yeah. and makes it real weird real quick yeah you know hmm. so that and I know what it feels like to, for somebody not to listen to me, so I don't like to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know that shit sucks. Make you feel kind of dumb. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel kind of dumb, kind of yeah. lame. Like what I said didn't. Like have, what you're saying doesn't matter. Doesn't. There you go. Perfect statement. Yeah. Perfect statement. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would absolutely say that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Man. Mm-hmm. And then, leading into the second question, mm-hmm. so that is. That's more than business or business relationships. That is just being a considerate person, a considerate yeah. like human being. It's yeah. just treating people right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that leads me into the next question, okay. which is, all right. Okay. Imagine this scenario. Okay. You are playing a video game of life. Okay. <laughs> and you're building your character right now. Your character has amazing skill maxed out skill talent That's maxed dope. out talent okay and whatever it is okay and then you can choose either one category to max out one of two categories <laughs> you can either choose to make your character be a great person or a great businessman which do you choose if you want to build somebody to succeed where their skill leads them I would definitely go for the great person because the reason why I would go for the great person is because they're like I was saying, the great person can get in contact with the right businessman that get to the right things that he needs. So point. that relationship is going to be built. Then boom, the doors are open for everything that he needs to where he becomes both of those things. Yeah. Uh, so I that's guess a good point. Yeah, that's how I would answer that one. That's a good point. Yeah. I guess I guess also you can't really. Uh, I take that back. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say you can't be one without the other, but you can definitely be a great person and and not not have, have business yes, skills. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Because it just comes down to knowledge. If I'm yeah. sorry for scooting the couch, man, but no, no um, don't even worry about it, man. Thing is, uh, if you don't know what you should know, this is kind of a crazy statement. If you don't know what you should know, then how you gonna know what you should know? Yeah, it's kind of weird to say, but you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, yeah. So until somebody tells you, then the light comes on. You're like, damn, this whole time I've been yeah. running around in circles when I could have been yeah. running in a straight line. But then, but you got okay. You got two type of people. You got a type of person that's like that and that's been running in circles, and then they're like, damn, I could have just been going straight the whole time, and they actually take the opportunity to go straight. Yeah. Versus the person that gets that information and stays on that wheel and oh. yeah boom damn mm. yeah ha, i hit you with that one yeah yeah see that's the thing i see a lot of people damn. that they talk about a lot of what they want to get done they talk about how they gonna do it and then six months later they having the same conversation about how they going yeah i'm like damn bro like i don't want to hear that versus a person that's saying the same thing, but they come in and telling you, oh, well, I did this today. I ain't do that much, but I did this today. Oh, well, I did this last week. I did this. I'm doing this next month. Okay, those little pieces and steps 
they're growing up to be yeah what you're supposed to yeah. do so i respect that versus yeah. you still going in a straight line whether it's a, a step by everything is step by step yep. so you can't expect to jump you know yeah. and, and from from one to ten so as long as you're taking those little steps you're always going to be that person in the straight line it don't matter how long you have to still give yourself a time limit on how long you're going to let something sit yeah you know and that's what keeps you a straight line person yeah. versus a hamster Damn. on the wheel you know? Damn. Mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. um it's like <laughs> what you just said it's like you had a fucking ray gun and you shot it into my head <laughs> and i can't even i can't even describe to you how much that philosophy of it's just tiny ass little steps here and there. Mm -hmm. Slow, tiny steps mm -hmm. continuously over a long period of time that get, get you up a mountain. Promise. It's crazy. I, I think about that every single day because mm -hmm. that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sometimes what trips me up is I, my brain and my dreams and desires and ambitions want me to leap. Where I, ever since I was young, I have had, I've wanted to leap as far as I can. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that. Mm -hmm. That will never happen. All it is is inching forward. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, inching forward. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you fall back. You just keep inching forward. You I, one thing that honestly really started that whole perspective in my life is yeah. in high school. I've always had trouble staying consistent and staying focused. Me too. Um... I've always had a lot of trouble with it. Me and too. I've always hated it about myself. Mm -hmm. So even like in high school, I, I knew it was like that in high school. Yeah. But anything I've ever worked on, whether it be working, exercising, mm -hmm. whether it was school, trying to learn, mm -hmm. whether it's this, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So in high school, I would look it up. Mm -hmm. Look up how. How do I not let these holds take, take control of me yeah. and stop me from moving forward Being with small successful. steps? Yeah, right, right. And one of the things I found, I forget, it was I was looking for motivation. I was looking for anything, like a way out, a way to help myself. Yeah. And I found I found some link somewhere. It led me to a Reddit post. And and that post said something. It was somebody had wrote about a life-changing factor. Mm. And I'm going to change the batteries real quick and then get into that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fuck the interview. I'm about to start asking for advice. <laughs> yeah, man, shit. Ask me anything. I'm, I ask me anything. I'm an open book, bro. I'll tell you anything that I know. Anything yeah. that I don't know. I can't wait to tell you I don't know it, and that's something <laughs> we can figure out together. That Hell that's yeah. the thing, shit, bro. Cause there again, I can't lose by just telling you something. No, yeah, shit. But mm -hmm. that was one thing. Not to get sidetracked again. No, that was one thing that was really interesting to me. Cause you know how there's. Like you said earlier, you said you asked somebody for I forget if you said you were asking him for how to do something. Yeah, and he yeah. said it's just a sauce. It's just a sauce, man. That that because I've encountered that not too much. Thankfully, I've really mostly interacted with people who are cool. You yeah, know? yeah, that's good. And also, like it's you, it, some you you can usually tell. Yeah, who yeah. like. Who, if you ask, will be genuine. open to it and genuine, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to, like, learn from them and, like, s just somebody who you'd like to have a relationship with, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one thing that always was in my mind, kind of just, like, in the back mind of, what's like, what's up with that, like, gatekeeping? And then I kind of... She I, sucks. I, I've... I feel like... It comes from a place of insecurity because in my mind, because I've definitely felt that before where or not insecure. <laughs> yeah, insecurity <laughs> because of fear, yeah, fear yeah. of like, yeah, yourself, yeah, not being like where you want to be yeah. and being intimidated by other people's success and almost like, fuck, I, I'm not where I need to be, you know, I can't and then just like in my position and then he take off of what I got. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then it's like. That was one thing where, like, I remember at some point I had the realization of, and it just made made life so much so much better for me and so much more enjoyable. The yeah. realization that, like, other people succeeding, one, doesn't do anything to hurt your skill or your position at all. 
No. And then two, if no. you choose to look at it this way, it can just all it can do if you let it just lift you up by encouraging you and making you happier in life. Man, every friend, everybody that I see, <clears throat> if I see anything that they've done, they see anything that I do. These are my yeah. real friends. These, this yeah. is how you know you got a friend because they're going to clap at the small things. Yeah. They're going to treat it like you already made it to the top. Or you the you the number one. Whatever the case, you're going to get that support. I don't care what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, that, that little repost, that share um that that like that comment like people don't understand for somebody that's just taking the picture showing ass versus somebody that's really taking the opportunity to showcase their skill and mm. the effort and time that they're putting into something you know it's the likes and stuff like that are a little bit more appreciated because people mm. are paying attention to what you're building you yeah know? so mm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah man oh my god i i, I it's rough. One one other little thing, and Man. then we'll get back to it. Because <laughs> I just, I just, I just, everything you're saying, it's like it just brings up another thought in my head, mm -hmm. and another mm -hmm. one. Nah, I love what you're saying, you're man. Good, bro. Um. Oh, of course. And then I say that, and then I lose. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. That that kind of makes me think of. I, I I I'm just curious to hear your reaction and your thought to this. The support of the people who care about me who love me, who I'm close to, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they support what I do, I appreciate it. And it makes me feel happy that I have those people in my life. Yeah. But when they tell me that they enjoy something yeah. that I do, or like they're like, good job. It's weird, but that, I've noticed that that means a lot less to me than a stranger saying something like that. Damn. Because it's like, a st and I say means a lot less. I get it. No, Not I means less, but it's like it's more honest. Yeah, because yeah, the yeah, people yeah, who, yeah, yeah. who support me, yeah. I like that support means so much because in my dark times and my low times, it's mm -hmm. like I can lean on that. You know, be like mm -hmm. they're here for me. Yeah, yeah. But it's almost like oh, it not. No, it doesn't mean more. It's more validating. I get it. That's a better word. Where I it's like it. they. I know that the people who support me, they're not going to be mean to me. You yeah, know? yeah. They're, they're just yeah, going to be kind because yeah, they're like that, you know? Yeah. And then um, str it's like strangers, I know they don't feel like they owe me anything. That's they owe me true. kindness or anything, but if they feel any type of way it's one of the on a comment on a YouTube video, it's like, I don't care about your They're going to say, they don't yeah, give a fuck, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, very and true. That's a, that's a weird point. That's to very just, true. I don't know. Now, now for me, yeah. That it's funny that you say that because for me, what I used to one at this point, I don't give a fuck whether somebody support me or not. Yeah, because I know what I'm doing is successful, so I don't care. Yeah, you know, and I don't have to be in front of everybody to show that yeah. I'm successful. I don't have to post up every time something goes yeah. right for me or every time something. No, nah, I'm not that. I'm. You'll never see all of the stuff that I post up that I've accomplished or that I every time I do something just because. But I will say this. For me, it's the opposite of how you feel. Like, for me to, I used to want for my mama, my daddy, you know, for everybody to look at me and be like, oh, you making beats? Oh, that's cool. Okay. Oh, you you engineering? Okay. Okay. You started off making $10 an hour. Okay. Now you're making 15 Okay. You're making 20 Okay. Now you're 30 Okay. Now you're 50 Okay. Now you're flying to Hawaii. Okay. Now you like the the for somebody for my people, my parents, or like, you know, just the closer people in your, you know, your family, for them to see that and show that appreciate uh i ain't gonna say appreciation but they see what you're doing and seeing the growth it meant it for me personally it m meant more to me at one time but now i really don't care and yeah it they see that i really don't mind i'm not looking for validation anymore yeah. but they also see that what i was doing and what i stayed consistently doing is paying off some kind of way you know yeah. And even when I told my mom, yeah, I'm about to move to Hawaii. I'm out of here, man. Everybody's <laughs> confused now. Everybody wonder yeah. what well, how you doing that? Well, what you gonna do? Well, how you gonna why you gonna show her that bank account right quick? My this why I Well what you been doing? Well, how you been doing? That's what you, crazy. It comes from what I've been doing the past 10, 15 years. Yeah. You know, it everything takes a little bit of time and people laugh it's crazy how people will laugh at people and say oh you've been doing this for 10 15 years and you ain't got no he's been doing that 10 15 years and he's still in winston he's still he's still where he 
you don't know what a person has really got going on. Mm. You know? Yeah. And a lot of that time, half of that time takes development anyway. Uh, a, a really a successful business takes five years to really show if it's going to be substantial or not. Yeah. So if you make it then after five, then something got to be going right, especially if you continue to increase. If you keep seeing an increase with what you're doing, then you're doing something right. So fuck yeah. what everybody else got to say. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. I guess you saying that kind of puts it into perspective a little because mm-hmm. you saying that kind of makes me realize that I'm speaking from my own experience. Mm-hmm. Like my girl, mm-hmm. she she's home for she's home for around a month now. Yeah, she just left a couple days ago. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to stack October. Understood. Because she, Understood. she's gone, so I have so much time. Understood. So I'm man. trying to stack October yeah, and really it. take steps. You know, I get it. It's smart. Um, Very smart. But like, she like when she says stuff like the other day, I I mentioned something about like like the last interview I did um, and I said something about how like they complimented me and mm-hmm. she, she said it's still in my mind she was like she's like oh my baby she's like she, she jokingly was like oh my baby's famous or something like that and, and like hey, bro. I, I didn't even really think about it at the time but it was like bro. damn that made me feel great bro you gotta understand yeah. that kind of support right there that that happy yeah. that what, that what people might say is corny or might like for somebody to do that for me, I'm gonna feel the same way that you feel. I know that feeling, bro. Yeah. Like shit. That that's gonna make that's gonna make my face turn hot. I know I'm yeah. gonna be blushing. That's gonna make me start to put there again. It gives yeah. you more of a battery in your back for what you got going on. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. I'm I'm I enjoy those kind of things, and I it's crazy that you say, bro. It's wild. It, this is a pretty good interview, man. Cause I'll say that I'm the black sheep of my family. I had a bro. Okay, this is one thing that I started doing. Yeah. I used to be a very uh, sugar coated person. I, I really yeah. don't like that. I don't want to be confrontational. Yeah. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't yeah. want to say the wrong thing, man. I don't care about none of that. You go through the right relationship or the wrong relationship, and it'll put a little bit more of uh, it'll put a little bit more. It'll make you be able to say a little bit more than, you know, be less concerned yeah. about people's feelings and more about the realistic perspective. Yeah. You know, and uh, I had that conversation with my mom and dad. I was like, well, I come back from the airport, just come yeah. back from Hawaii. And they I, I needed for them to come pick me up, just, you know, and they wanted to come pick me up, you know, which, which was fine. Yeah. And on the way back, you know, we had that conversation there. I was talking to them and like we were saying that active listening. I could tell they wasn't paying attention yeah. or they didn't they didn't give a fuck about what I was talking about. Man, mm, my yeah. yeah. This time I got a chance to go. Uh, I jumped off China Wall. Um I had an opportunity to uh I did this, I did that, me and Kid Money, uh, me and Jacoby. Uh oh, that's fine. All right. All right. Damn. Yep, that's all right, that's pretty good. You know, and I'm like, well, hold on, what the fuck? Hold on, y'all not about to keep talking or being all fucking what the fuck? And then yeah, I just something shit. just snapped, and then I, I was I'm not being disrespectful. I'm never gonna be disrespectful. But I was like, oh, you know, yeah. we got into that conversation. Like, what is it that I got to do? What did I do to y'all? Like, I'm the black sheep of the family. That's why I, I told them that. I said that I, y'all make me feel like the black sheep of the family. You know, is there again? The relationships are not always the best. You want them. To, we always strive or always would like to have the best relationships, but. The older you get, the more that you start to understand and realize that the relationships are not as uh, or as good as the picture was painted for it to be. You know, you kind of realize it, but you don't really get it until you get grown. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you yeah. know it, but you can't really put it in. Like, I couldn't put it in the thought. I knew something wasn't really right. Yeah. But I couldn't put it in the thought. I couldn't put it in the motion. I don't really know what the hell is going on. But being yeah. older, I could see it. Yeah, like the pictures painted sometimes ain't always what they are. Yeah. Hmm. So, but yeah, I'm. It's yeah. And now I'm getting a little bit more pats on the back than I was a couple of years ago. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I guess that's one of my big goals. Honestly, is to is to like, and it's it has always taken work to try and. Because I've recognized it at points, you know, and there's been mm-hmm. points when I've been able to recognize it personally deeper mm-hmm. versus just on a comprehension level. Yeah. But I definitely know that there's still a large part of me that wants to get the – what's the word? Like actual concrete 
achievements and steps and milestones I fully that I can take to get those pats on the back. You I know, fully I feel like I got such a chip on my shoulder where I, I like, I, I'm get, I like, I would die doing this. Mm-hmm. If, if I haven't made it, mm-hmm. then I haven't stopped working in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking die doing it. Okay, well, look, I can hit you with this right now. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you this now. Yeah. Do you understand how much of an asset you are at first as an individual? For two reasons. I'm, I'm going to say, do you know why? What could you give me the two reasons why I think that you are an asset? Bam. <sighs> Hit him with some shit. <laughs> two reasons. Yeah. One, I'll say that because of my camera skill and my experience with the having, having just done this podcast so much, it's a good asset to be able to give an experience and good like content reels Mm -hmm. interview to people Mm -hmm. who haven't had that before Mm -hmm. so i'll say that's one two let's see if you're gonna get it (laughs) yeah let's see if you're gonna get this one two i'll say i have found that doing these interviews through after after talking with people after interviews Mm -hmm. i feel like one thing i've learned that i can appreciate is that these offer kind of what i've noticed a two-way recharge where I've, i've talked with some people who after i do it yeah maybe they said they've been in a slump and afterwards and Lord knows I've been in my fair share of slumps. Yeah, more all, slumps we, than steps. We all get there. Way more <laughs> slumps than steps for me. We all get Way there. Way more static than progression. Yes, sir. For understood. Me. We all, it's, it's how it is. And I know there's been, um, there's been mad interviews mm-hmm. where I talk, and I, I talk with them, and it's great. Mm-hmm. And I step away from it, and I'm like, damn. I feel like I, feel like I just got pushed. I feel like. That's dope. A little like I didn't even just take a step, but just by talking and being out there, networking, talking with somebody about this whole career field, everything mm-hmm. just pushed me to take another step. Yeah. And I know that some people have like, and I've let people know that after conversations with them, and they and I've I've gotten like responses that are like, oh, same, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah so I yeah. say that now for me, we already talked about it, but the number two for me personally is the type of person the individual that you are same thing like i said with jacoby mm. it's just certain shit that you recognize with people and you know i know for a fact when i'm dealing with a bullshitter within the first two or three minutes that i'm sitting there talking to him it don't yeah. take long you know what i mean it usually comes out yeah real fast you know but some some people are better at hiding their bullshit but overall when somebody's a bullshitter and you're not used to being around it this gonna it'll it'll it'll, 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 it'll come out quick yeah but the reason I asked you, do you understand how much of an asset you are and what those assets that you have? Now, these combination of things, why I say this is because, you know, you talking about being more sociable and being able to, you know, go out like, bro, you got to understand we live in Hawaii, bro. Going out to these bars, going out to any, you can walk down the street. It don't matter what you are doing in Hawaii. You can start a random conversation. And the fact that you do camera work, your value automatically does this. <laughs> Anybody that you talk to that got a camera, their eyes do like this. I don't yeah. care where we been. Anytime I'm with anybody that has a video camera, they let somebody know. And that person has been looking for that. Yeah. There's so many people out here. So many people that are looking just for like, man, you can just go sit, bro. Man, you could go sit in Waikiki. You could say you could sit out there with this right here. People gonna walk up to you. You could have five five dollar photos, ten dollar photos. You know, yeah. right here in front of in, in the same spot. Everybody just stand right here. If you want to, and you gonna make a lot, bro. You make so much money not doing nothing, bro. Click. <laughs> Send me an email. Click. Send me an email. You could do, think about that. If you did $10 $10 photos and you did, I'm just going to give a random number, 300 photos in a day. If it was that many people in Waikiki, it was a, let's just say for, let's just say for Halloween, you want to take this camera out here and sit here and do this. 
Think about how many people going to be in costumes and can't wait to be seen. Think about how many people can't wait to be looked at and posted on social media. Down in like Waikiki. Bruh. The amount of people on vacation or anything like that. Come on, bruh. Look, okay. To put it in more perspective. I made a post. I did a, a reel um, last year. Yeah. Because I was here in Hawaii um, for for uh, Halloween. Yeah. And I got 11.1K views. Damn. Yeah. And that's a lot. I, I can average maybe like 2K, maybe 3K. Yeah. Um, I'm not like no super huge, real like view kind of person. But on that particular one, I got no. It might be a lot. That was 11K, and I, I it might have been 17K. I don't want to look at it right yeah. now, but I know for a fact it was over 10,000 views yeah. that looked at it, you know. So, yeah, if you did that with that camera, people going to want to see that. You, a two-second video, it, I don't know if you can do like a – you can do anything anything you want to think about with that camera and just yeah. charge $10, bro. You have a line out there. Yeah. So many people just walking by. If they see that you're busy now, they're going to go down there, go get a drink from the bar. They're going to come back anyway. Yeah. They got to go back to parking. It's a good idea. Honestly. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, bro. It's a good idea. <laughs> Make some money out here. And see, that was, that's what I told somebody. Oh, it's so Fuck. expensive. It's so expensive to live in Hawaii. It's so expensive to live in Hawaii. Well, if you are a hustler, if you understand like, like the – how stuff works out here then you're gonna be able to make some money if you're a hustler you're gonna make some money one then two the way that everything works out here is a little bit different like i'm it's cool to know that i can get free health insurance by working part-time yeah i'm working a part-time job getting health insurance i haven't Damn. worked a job in 12 13 years Damn. 13 14 boy you know how foreign it was for me to go fill out tax papers to fill out the the I, I, the yeah. w w9 uh, that's different than doing a, a W two. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's a little bit different, but for me to do that shit was foreign to me. But I was really in there like I felt dumb because it's been so long. <laughs> I didn't want to ask him, but but you know whatever. I, I didn't ask for help and got through it. But but still, bro, like damn, that's how long it's been since I've had a job, and that's crazy. That, that should speak for the success of me being a producer and sound engineer. Yeah. I don't care what's going on. You could have that job and That's still gonna insane. be struggling. You know, you still gonna make the same kind of money. Think about this: if I work a, a job for, and I got paid twenty dollars an hour, first I got to fill out the application. I got to wait. Hopefully, I get hired. Hopefully, this is all off of probability. This is not yeah. certainty. Yeah. We're talking all off of probability right now. I put it in the application. I might get hired. If I do get hired, I got to wait until they want me to come in for training. Yeah. Then once I come in for training, I got to wait two weeks in the hole before I get my first check. Who the fuck got time to sit around and wait <laughs> and be broke for that long? Or, or yeah. really, Jesus like, come Christ. on, man. Like, Holy so shit. I really, versus, now at this point, I make $50 an hour. I charge, Let's just say I charge $50 an hour for, you know, recording. Yeah. Let's say we put six hours worth of work up today. Yeah. 100 200 that's 300 dollars in six hours in my hand yeah fuck no job application no waiting in high demand yeah. so think about your service and my service are their hand they work hand in hand it's yeah. the same type of shit bro yep. so you can do Damn. the same yeah yeah Damn. so you wrap your head around that yeah you know what i mean Fuck man, <laughs> yeah, I'm blowing your mind today, right? <laughs> yeah, bro. So that's, that's one of those moments where it's like, I feel like I have so far to go, man. But it's it's possible for you to get there. All you got to do is just stay consistent with yeah. the work. Yeah, that's it. You just can't fuck up and say, man, I'm fuck it, bro. I'm about to just say <laughs> I quit, man. Yeah, uh, I, I watch. I just watched somebody, a successful, successful producer. From my area, stop producing to go to the army. Damn. Like, what the fuck? He had a Holy song that shit. was, he produced a song and it was on the radio playing like every day. He produced Jesus the beat. Jesus Christ. I'm this beat and this song played on the radio every day. It'll still come on the radio, but he, he it, stuff isn't going the way that he wanted. So he said, fuck it, I'm about to go do something else. That's crazy. I'm like, man, because 
you got to analyze your business. You got to be real enough to look at your business and understand, okay, this is what's great, and this is where I'm fucking up. This yeah. is what I got to do to make my shit a little bit better. Yeah. And when you get there and you can be realistic with yourself and say, all right, this is what's not right about my business. And like, yeah. with you, okay, with you, if you, could add, if you could ask yourself, if I could ask you that, what would be the thing that you feel like you could do better the one thing that you've only said that i feel like really is the only thing that i see personally is more networking yeah just taking the opportunity to talk to people random conversations that even bigger than that though Mm. bigger issue than that Mm. which which is like i've always known is knowing how to translate my art into money because because i've always i've always wanted money (laughs) yeah in middle school yeah, I would try like I don't know. It was just whatever it was. I would try, I would try and like so buy buy shoes from like thrift store and resell it, and then I, re- I, w- I wouldn't really hustle. stick with it. I buy them from like AliExpress, real cheap. Okay, and I would try to sell them and stuff. Yeah, and I'd do it a little bit, yeah. and then I wouldn't really stick with it. Maybe every here and then do that, but then like I just wasn't good at doing it myself. To where like right as as early as I could. I I was like I'm not great at that and it wasn't a conscious thing but like at 14 I applied to Kroger just because like yeah yeah I didn't yeah, really yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. good at like doing it myself yeah so I was like I'm just gonna like do that and and fuck Kroger they didn't fucking yeah, they didn't fuck hire Kroger. me yeah. fuck them yeah, so I became a, I became a lifeguard at 15 which oh, is dope because the city up. the city was hiring at 15 that's cool so that was cool but like now with this it's embarrassing how bad I am at translating because I know I know that the like just knowing how to use this cam- like you're saying knowing yeah. how to use this camera yeah. d- knowing how to do a lighting setup everything like that yeah. knowing the basic of log- logistics I have yeah. to organize a shoot yeah. I know that I should be bringing in at least some money but like whether I don't know what it is, I just I I just am so terrible. What you got on there again, bro? It, how how long how long have you said you've been doing this? How long? Well, off and on. See, so that's 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 really the main issue. There it is. Off and on, consistency. Yeah. Bam. It's not a bad thing, but realistically, okay. I'm gonna just say this. Let's just say, like for me. It was a time where I was, you know, going through a relationship, you know, you know, a bad relationship. You know what I mean? And I'm more focused on. I know for a fact I can go out of this house and I can go. And at the time, primarily, I was making more money off of beats versus um, engineering. Yeah, because I'm getting paid ten dollars an hour. When I first started engineering, you know, everybody I'm, we, I'm making fifty dollars an hour, yeah. but I'm only getting ten dollars out of the cut. Yeah. So there again, I'm fine with that. But it's what it is. But did not get you know it's, it's like either make the money or satisfy not getting argue have the arguments and the fussing and the, the the rocky stuff at home you know uh the right person is gonna make the relationship you know the right relationship or the right person is gonna make everything that you're doing a whole lot easier too yeah so just like you said that support oh my baby's gonna be famous my baby. <laughs> yeah bro that that means a lot that's a, yeah, that's a push because at the end of the day you showing me that small thing you don't understand you joking but you don't know how big that is for me you know and in return once i get to where i'm going i'm gonna in return show you how big i can show you better versus tell you because you can tell somebody something all day but when you show them some shit facts you know yeah you know and it's what you show them you know you can show you can say hey girl i appreciate you so much and give her like a stick of bubble gum thank you (laughs) versus Damn, baby, I appreciate you. And then you break her out with something super substantial, a house, a car, uh, whatever. Yeah. You know, you know, any anything, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, but it takes time. Yeah. You know, but but there again, that support is really what you want and what you're getting. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, man. I don't even know, like, because I think about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Because in, in about a year, mm-hmm. I'm going to get out of the military. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to Columbus. And then... From there, it's just step one is how am I going to be putting food on the table? <laughs> so it's like I don't want to do anything but this. Yes, sir. If I have to, I will. Yes, sir. I'll do anything to put food on the table. You know. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, um, realistically now. I, I, whether it's whether it's working sixty hours a week and then 
every night dedicating however much time I can to stay alive and yeah. still do this. Yeah. Or I know that I could figure out some way to make a livable amount of money doing anything, Bruh. anything in relation to this. Bruh. But it's like, I don't know. And I don't even know the next step to take. Bruh. It's like, you, I don't know what I don't know. I, I know that if, if I could like, I know if I knew how, mm -hmm. it'd be simple as hell. I'm, bro, look, I'm try I already told you. OPM. OPM? Other people's money. <laughs> credit. That 700 credit score. Making sure that that credit is on. Because then that way you can go in there and ask for whatever you need for that, you know. And then that's the way that you really go about doing what you need to until. Because let's just say, okay, you got $5,000. We're going to say a very small number, you know, like just to be. I got $5,000 just to make sure that I can take care of bullshit for the month, whatever. You know, for a fact, you don't necessarily need it. But if you were to need it, you have that to fall back on. So you're not so worried about if I make this move financially, damn, I'm going to take this one shot. And then if this shit don't go the way I need for it to, or if I don't get enough people to come record with me in a certain, and you know, by the end of the month, I got rent due. And if I don't have at least five people come record, I can't pay the rent. I can't get the, yeah. I can't, you know, we don't want to be like that. So what we want to be focused on is, all right, if not, okay, the rent's still going to be paid, whatever. And with that loan I took out, it don't matter because I can make that payment on that loan and I don't have to give all of that money back at one time. So what you're doing, it, you paying a portion of what you're taking now, and you're building your credit. Interesting. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You build your credit and off of other people's money. This stuff hmm. that, that, you know, this is hmm. what old people doing. Yeah. This is what old folks doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't tell. You, know, you, you got to figure it out on your own. There again, it's gatekeeping information. It's gatekeeping information, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? You can start using other people's money, and you're not going to lose. Like, hmm. bro, I could, bro. I can sit here and talk to you all day about like the stuff I've recently learned there again because somebody doesn't mind. Like how how are they gonna lose with the information? It's so much money out here on earth for us to be really using. I don't care what nobody's saying, but they throwing money out here like confetti. Yeah. You know? Damn. You just gotta make sure that you can show your credit. How good is your credit? Interesting. Yeah, I'm bro. You bro. If you had a 700 credit score, you could walk in and and split. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you better than tell you. You can walk in certain banks, bro, and you can walk out with depending on just where it is and what's going on. You might get a hundred thousand dollars. You might get seventy five thousand uh, dollars. At if you want, you know that you, that you're approved for. That don't mean that you yeah. got to take it. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's there for for you to. Yeah. Damn. Man, fuck that. Let me go get let me get this car right quick and go put it on Toro. We ain't about to drive it. Shit, we about to make it's gonna pay itself off. Or yeah. Make it create a residual source mm -hmm. of income. That way you can sit at home and focus on this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Shit, you got a hundred thousand dollars. You ain't even gotta take if you let's just say you wanted to, you could take seventy percent of that and invest it in something that you know for a fact is going to recruit is, is going to be residual source of income yeah that other 30 percent equipment promotion yeah damn um mm -hmm. so i don't know if you was that jump for you you said it's been what 12 13 years since you worked a job like a, a, like a mm-hmm hourly job type shit like yeah like a nine to five yeah nine to five bro the last nine to five I, bro, it's crazy it's very ironic that we talking like you say stuff and i'm like well damn i can relate to that it's very relatable bro shit my last job that i really was working was at food lion and i got the job just to satisfy my mom and my my girlfriend at the time Y'all want me to have a job, okay, whatever. Just because y'all don't see all of the money that i'm making i'm not telling you every dollar that i'm making on purpose I'm doing this because I don't want to be, I just don't want to do that. I just want to do something a certain way, and I wanted to make sure it happened that way. Yeah. But I got that job, and I was in the deli. I was slicing up meat, and I was in there uh, baking cookies. This is for myself, not for the customers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Shout out, Food Line. Yeah. That honey, yeah. that honey baked turkey. 
<laughs> yeah, I used to shave it on zero, and uh, I like shave. I like to shave meat, man. And um, I used to bake the oatmeal cookies, <laughs> and I used to fry the uh, the, like the chicken nuggets and stuff. I'd be back there eating. I was not working, <laughs> and smoking the uh, the weed vape pen. I was doing all type of shit. I don't care. I don't care if they know because I I don't work there now. So you can put all of this in there. Hell I don't yeah. care. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the last real job I worked until yeah. coming out here. And I've always had a sense of pride about going back to get that nine to five. I'm like, fuck that. I'm not about to work no job because if I do it, it's going to throw me off from doing this. And I've been, I'm, I'm very one track minded. Like yeah. if I want to get something done, I'm about to get that shit done. Like yeah. I ain't about to keep playing around. It's, it's yeah. either I'm gonna really get it done or I'm really not gonna get it done. Yeah. So I've been more focused on doing that. And this nine to five I'm working now, it's no pride in it because one, I'm older and I understand the sense in it. If I'd have been working a job in Winston Salem, North Carolina, I'd be beating myself up on the inside every day. Shoot, if I'm gonna pay eleven hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars, or whatever. I, hundred dollars in rent to stay at winston salem if i'm gonna pay the same thing there and i'm gonna be paying almost that i'm be paying out here it's a no-brainer i man it's a no-brainer yeah it's a no-brainer so yeah damn mm -mm. yeah bro fuck a nine to five i think i think part of my like i'm scared, I'm scared. when i get out of the military i'm because i've never had the time yeah and the freedom to pursue this full time yeah, yeah so yeah, all yeah. i've ever known for this this career pursuit is finding the energy after i get off work after i get home deal with whatever ever i have to deal with right now it's cooking <laughs> doing the dishes cooking clean, clean up it. whatever i have to do preparing for tomorrow what f finding the energy through caffeine, mm -hmm. through energy, through coffee, whatever. And it only does but that much. Yeah. Is finding that to mm -hmm. put all of that into focus to put everything I have into it for a few hours. So I've never had the full time for this. And I don't – and, like, doing that, <laughs> it hasn't – it hasn't – I, it has not been able to – I haven't been able to show for it. I've been able to improve my skill a lot. But as far as making money off it, what I told myself was, like, a couple years ago, I was like, if if by the time I'm about to get out of the military, if I'm not making money, good money, well, I can sustain myself for doing off this, like, then I got to, like, get another job. I don't know what it's going to look like if I do take that jump and pursue it full time, what it's going to look like, you know? Do you have any kind of faith? Are you? Would you? Would you call yourself? Uh, cause I'm. I'm not. I ain't gonna say I'm a religious person because I ain't about yeah. to be running down no pew, uh, like running down the, like an aisle, shaking the tambourine. I'm not one of them motherfuckers. I'm not doing that. Yeah. But uh, and I, I hate to sound like like that saying that, but um, no disrespect to religious people and religion, but I'm more of a spiritual person. You know, I would I would say it's more of a spirit thing. You really got to. That doesn't mean that you uh don't see and understand that it's it's something high, a higher power out here doing something stuff i don't feel like stuff randomly happens uh so i personally and everybody i respect everybody's opinion but just mm. personally for me i don't think everything just randomly happens yeah like it's no way okay for instance i came to hawaii my first time with no money in my pocket and left with like twelve hundred dollars dang i I took a leap of faith. I didn't know how it was going to happen. Just like man said. Took a leap of faith. Came home with $1,200. Damn. Bruh, look. That time and space that you got, you got to understand, that's the time and space for you to figure it out. And let me ask you, do, do, you, do you do shit like, uh, how many times do you post up? I got you know interviews i'm doing interviews for x amount of dollars on a consistent basis right now mm -hmm. never yeah so i was for a bit i was i was trying to like when i because you know there's been times where i'm like all right i need to start it so i'm gonna take that step and try to start charging for it and yeah. then like what would usually get me is like because like consistency has always been an issue for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. that has I've had to put so much uh, time and effort into solely yeah. just getting my consistency there. Yeah, yeah. Where like yeah. 
and I would try to do that, and then maybe some shit would happen, and then like the the, the like the little river of shit that's co- of work that's coming in, I would do that, and then like mm. I would usually attribute it to I don't have enough portfolio, I don't have enough of a media presence, <clears throat> marketing presence, or like that reputation, mm. and it kind of dries up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or maybe, I, I don't even that. know if. I don't know though, because that could be wrong. Maybe I just didn't give enough time. Or look, bi- business is like the ocean. That's one thing I don't like. Yeah, it's, it it does like this. Motherfucker does like this, bro. This shit gonna come up sometime. Gonna yeah. Come. What it is is once the ocean is once you get everything flooding in, that's the time. It's it's hard, and, and that's the balance that that is hard for me personally. It used to be really really hard. It's still kind of hard sometimes, but finding that balance when all of that money is coming in you making the money so you're like hell yeah i know all right cool i know it's about to come all right but then when everything dry up what what did you do how did you manage your money did you manage it properly did you go get too many drinks at the bar did you go spend something that you didn't ne- go buy something you didn't necessarily have to have um did you pay off any debt you know like stuff that's yeah. gonna it, did you do something that's gonna help you or did you do something that's gonna hurt you with that money yeah you know so i'm i've been thinking more like that and that's been helping me to you know be more financially literate and you got to be around that's another thing i got around people that were more financially literate mm-hmm. than me yep you see those on the fridge right there you see those yes, two sir. papers that's all i saw like schedules so so it's not schedules so i the military has a free financial advisor Damn. so i was doing i i just I've, i went once last like a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. i was like i gotta figure this shit out yeah and i went and i talked to this lady she was she's dumb smart yeah and she like she told me some shit to do and that's to track every dollar every i spend because i like i can't even tell you how often i think about money you know that's one of my best friends told me the same thing my best friend he's a doctor and i ride we ride motorcycles together and that that was the one thing that he told me. He yeah, got, he got he got his own practice. You know what I mean? Like he he knows what the hell is going on with with some money. And he was telling me, he said, you got to really understand where every dollar and cent is going. You got to be frugal. You got to really understand what the hell is going on. And when you spending money, you better make sure you writing it off. It better be for business purpose. I don't give a damn if we like. Okay, one thing we do, we always we go we go hang out we go to a bar but when we at the bar we talking about money so everything that we doing at that night he can go write it off because we're talking about something that we all gonna do to put into a business we talking about what is it that we've already yeah. invested in yeah. how is it doing for what you know what we need you know yeah. and he just has taught me as well as um man people bro, people out here teach that they, they the information is free there again you have to re- establish them relationships. But yeah. how do I establish the relationship with the right person? How do I know when to... Bro, it's like it's a needle in a haystack. You, you yeah. got to just, you know, kind of go out and, yeah, you know, be genuinely who you are. And you're going to attract those right people. And over time, it comes easier, bro. Because at first, I be going out and I'm just around people. And I'm meeting a bunch of knuckleheads. I'm meeting people that I know for a fact they ain't got no kind of value. Because what? I'm in the wrong place. Or I'm I don't I'm like like with you you can really go about anywhere and you have a universal thing people gonna always come to you and say damn you got a camera if you out with your product yeah like in your hand they're like damn okay it, it's a thing but even just having a conversation with somebody like if I were just to meet you in the bar you say are you a videographer oh, for real I'm immediately light up I, anybody that's like me gonna light up mm, you know yeah, what I mean yeah. so that's why it's yeah. good for you to be out um one of my friends said he saw one of the tyler the creators of uh, entourage downtown the other day Damn. he does uber and just happened to see him at the stoplight he was out walking or whatever but there again just being out and being active in this kind of place is what makes shit make sense yeah. one big reason why i came out here to be a sound engineer is because i see out of all of this out here bro if this is an island you might see it might be one studio out here it might be two and then there again the studios that are out here what type of service are they providing is it a oh yeah he's the shit and he gives me good service and i feel like i'm paying i'm not getting overcharged or is it the latter you know yeah you know so yeah those are the things that are important and i see that it's a open market yeah i ain't about to be bullshitting out here 
Yeah. I got me, I got Jacoby. Oh, I'm not I ain't about to bullshit with nothing out here. Make yeah. sure that my there again, my credit score, my finances are in order. Make sure that that business credit gets established properly. Then mm. yeah. how else you gonna lose? I set up the building, shit, motherfuckers gonna come running in the studio. It's a studio? What, Quaffy out here running it? Oh, I know I'm not. I know what kind of sound I'm about to get. Yeah. Bro, like it's a you it's a it's a uh, like a blueprint for a success. Yeah. You can't you can't Damn. lose. And then think think about this. Oh, bro, chasing there shooting fucking he, <laughs> he doing a podcast in there too? Bro, you can add so much value to one building, yeah. bro. You know what I mean? That's all I'm thinking about. Yeah. And think about how many celebrities come out to this island. Yeah. How many rappers come out to this island? Yeah. How many people that want to come out and they gonna want to come rap somewhere? And if we the only name studio or the best name on yeah. the island, where else they gonna go? Yeah. I just heard an artist rapping about walking down Waikiki. What the fuck? Yeah. Damn it! See, if I would have had a studio, I could have been the one that yep. recorded that. You know, potentially. Yeah. So you know, those are the things that I've been thinking about, and why I say this is this is, it's a market to be out. Here's a good reason to be yeah. here. Damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm gonna pause it again. Yeah. And then, all right. So, man, and the conversation and everything has been amazing. Yeah, man. And for it's real. it's been great. For real. Fucking just awesome. For real. So, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is something that you mentioned. Yeah. You mentioned the story of how you came to the island and the person it was about the person who you said taught you right no no not two the, different ones i'm the, like, not the, the the reason that okay this is how i got yeah. out here to the island there again the guy his name is doom by the way that's the one that taught me how to engineer yeah i came i came from chop house i learned how to engineer from a studio at the time it's called chop house and uh i met this artist, his name was Wu the Truth, and he was in the army too. Shout out Wu the Truth, and Wu brought Kid Money to the studio one time. There again, man, you got to work with Coffee, man. You got to work with. It. There again is because I paid really close attention to detail when you know as an engineer, so I'm I'm reputable, you know. Yeah. And he brought Kid Money. Kid Money was like, oh, bro, I'm fucking with you, bro. I'm always. And then that went from, at one point, I stopped recording at Chop House and started doing mobile sessions. So I was traveling. And there again, if you yeah. th think about this, why? where else can you make money di instead of directly, where would you indirectly make money from traveling and providing a service? Where where huh. would you? if? Yeah. To, where, where do you think? As as an engineer, if anything, <laughs> mm -mm -mm. oh, it, you, it, it applies to this too. This this there again. This is this money for you. Where would you make money traveling on the back end? Yeah, you mean traveling like locally, right? Driving, or you mean yeah. flying? Dri no, you, well, oh, 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 I'll say this: you can do you can do both, traveling or flying. If you dri driving or flying, driving or flying. Like, I'm sorry, I'm dumb. Nah, you know you you're not. No, do you mean not. uh, where else would you make money? Yeah. On the back end of traveling. Yep. I'm. <laughs> I guess. In a what like. I mean, I guess for these, I could charge like, hey, we're going to shoot it in here. Mm -hmm. Or I come to you for an extra X amount. So I guess you could add it on. To nope. Think. Nope. I'm lost. Nope. The way that you would make the money on the back end is down. If you're driving, yeah, download download like an app like a Mile IQ or something like that to keep up. Let's just say you had to go. From here all the way to Waikiki, then all the way to Ever, yeah. then you had to come right back out here. All of these expenses or all of these mileage that you're driving, you get paid for the mileage. You know, you get like X amount of cent per mile that you can write off on your taxes. 
You know what I mean? As if, a business expense. Boom. If you flying, and gas bruh, too, bruh. right? And one year, one one year, I got back three thousand dollars. You're lying from driving. Do you have an LLC? Yeah. And is it is yeah, it like Quaffy involved with that? Quaffy Entertainment. Yeah. You you write it off for the business. Be, damn, three thousand. One year. This was the first year I ever did it. You know what I mean? Where I, where I actually filed it because I had already You're been lying. doing mobile sessions. I swear on everything I love, I got three thousand dollars back specifically on that holy shit yeah so like you you that's the way to do it yeah that's why it's so important to have a llc and it's so important to be more understood like what's more important about music is and music business is the business of music if you don't know more about money and how to make it and how to spend it and how to recycle it how to get it back hmm. yeah so and that that goes it applies to business not just music business yeah. but business yeah so damn for you you know if you go say oh yeah i can come do i come do we can do it at your house or whatever if you want even or well, even forget that music videos i'm not shooting it here come on i'm bro. going somewhere to shoot come on think about that we're gonna drive from well we're gonna go to china wall then we're gonna go over to the north yep. go to the north you know then I'm going to go, I don't care where we go because at the end of the year, it, the mile IQ is tracking every mile that you're driving. And then you might not be doing anything. Mile IQ is still tracking it. So how's it going to tell you that you're not doing it for business? you going to the store for whatever, but you can still, it's, mile IQ is tracking all of that. So at the end of the year, you can, oh, yeah, that's the thing. If you want to put it for business, swipe it right for business. If it's for personal, swipe it left, and it's going to go to personal, and it won't track the personal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Mile IQ, it's an app? Yeah. Yeah. It's like when a I'm, yellow, yellow When sign. I'm editing this, are your phone somewhere in the fucking house or in the room? Download <laughs> Mile IQ. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and just see it. And it's, it's, you, can, you get like 40 free drives per month. Now, if you pay for the app, I think it's like five bucks or ten bucks. I don't know exactly what it is. I can't remember, yeah. but you get unlimited unlimited drives. If you moving around like that, yeah, then you it's it's essential for you to pay for the app. But if you're not doing that much, but enough to where you need to track some of your yeah. business, get do it for free and swipe them forty. And just make yeah. sure you're driving 45 miles, 50 miles, 60 miles. Every trip. Whatever it is, in whatever direction, you know, however it is, if you can just add it up, to, and it'll add up, and it'll show you how many miles that you've driven. Damn, you know? Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's, it's an app to have. But Damn. back to what I was saying about yeah. how I got here, you know, working with working with Kid Money, he ended up, you know, he was in the Army too. He's in the Army. Wu was in the Army. Uh, he ended up. Kid Money got uh, stationed out here, and he was like, "Bro, I need you to come out here." Before he got stationed out here, he was in Fayetteville, and I was driving. I drove to Fayetteville to go record him because he was stationed out at uh, Fort Fort Bragg, and um, yeah, he ended up moving out here and was like, "Bro, I need you to come out here. I need you to come out here." And then one of the artists, it's a, a close friend and the artist, you know, um, from I grew I grew up with him. He worked for the airport. Uh, so he does like you know he does the booking and stuff. Yeah. So he got me a buddy pass. Like I told you, I didn't fly. I, I came over here with no money in my pocket. I ain't even have money to to get something to eat in the airport for free. Free. You're lying. Buddy pass. Flight for free. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Got over here. Got everything I needed to get done. Um, and I stayed with Kid Money. The fact that I was just staying with him, he provided from some somewhere for me to lay my head. I ain't gonna charge you nothing. I thank you because yeah. what I can do is work on establishing my relationships with everybody else. Just like you said, would you rather be the businessman or the the other guy? Yeah, I'm, I'll be the other guy because you can damn establish that rapport. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and then from there, I came over. I stayed a whole month. Came went back. Then I messed around and came back again before the end of the year. And then I spent New Year's Eve out here. Uh, then that next year I came out. I've been coming out at least two times a year for at least a month at a time when I come. Yeah. Every time. So every time I come, first time I came, I left, went back home with $1,200. Next time I came, as soon as I got out here, I made like $1,100, $1,200 selling computers. You know what I mean? Damn. Yeah. There first just off of that but then i'm still booking sessions and recording yeah you know, yeah yeah on top of that Jesus so Christ. yeah bro so like it's seamless to be able to make that money so it just made sense for like 
for me to keep coming over here. Now, Kid Money, he done moved to Texas. That's he's the reason I came out here. Yeah, but I taught I taught Jacoby how to engineer. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's doing so well. Then I'm like, well, it makes it makes sense for me to be out here with him, you know, because he knows what to do. I know what to do. If we're doing the same thing at the same time, we can double and triple. Damn, what I can do by myself. Yeah. So you know that was the thing that was like, man, I'm about to just make the decision to come out here and really stay. And shit been going good not being i've been here um maybe two almost two and a half i've been here since october the first officially moved into my apartment yeah and i already got a car working on getting my motorcycle shipped out here um working on finding a business space uh and and these things are really are re- realistic and very within reach like that that bit that business Damn. space once we get that business space it's not there again your words are powerful not if yeah but when if you're talking with probability in anything you're doing you should expect probability in it you yeah know what i mean if you're talking Fuck. with certainty this shit gonna happen the yeah. thing is you're gonna sound stupid and look stupid if you're saying it's gonna happen but you don't have a plan behind it if yeah. you got a, a a a real plan behind what you're uh-huh. doing how you gonna lose yeah i don't give a fuck if you care about what i'm talking about i don't care if you if you believe me or not because i already seen something work before so i'm gonna keep on doing it you wouldn't you wouldn't keep posting these videos and keep doing these videos if you didn't see some type of substance and some type of something in what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So damn. <laughs> damn, man. But that's how I got out here. You know what I mean? Damn. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Off a of, off a of, off a of certainty. It was yeah. no probability and nothing I was doing. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me man. You got me wanting to make that leap. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, bro, you got to just think about that, bro. If all of my time is clouded up with with certain responsibilities that I know for a fact these are, I'm not no dummy, so I'm not going to prioritize my stuff incorrectly. I'm not about to put my my what's not making me money before what's making me money because realistically I got to take care of, of yeah. life, you know. But when you get the opportunity to have a little bit more space, shit, if you don't take advantage of that, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Cause you got something to offer. It'd be different if you ain't. If it was kind of shitty, the, the the quality of the video really wasn't that good. You really didn't look like you know what you were doing. You really didn't have no kind of substance to anything that you're doing. Yeah, you might want to try something else, bro. But yeah, it'd be stupid to stop. It'd be stupid to not continue to develop. You'd be really, you'd be doing yourself a disservice. I'd be doing myself a disservice if I start making music. I played the two reggae bands. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Play the there again, play the drums, the piano, the get the bass guitar, uh, singing choirs, singing anything you could think of. I was singing French, German, all type of stuff. I didn't know what I was singing. I just had yeah. to memorize the words, you know. That's funny. And Holy this is shit. like an ele- like middle school. It's like elementary middle school kind of stuff. But take that leap of faith, bro, because you're not gonna lose nothing by doing it. Shit, I, I hate I would hate to be like, damn, I I should've damn, I should've every time that I thought that I maybe thought that two or three times in my life. Damn, I wonder what would have happened if I would have. Yeah. Fuck that. I ain't never going to think like that again. Yeah. Mm. I'll take the opportunity. If I fail, I fail, but at least I tried it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn, man. Yeah, so just know you got some substantial shit on your hands, and I, whatever you going to do, I, I'm going to be doing this right here. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so just know it, bro. Keep man. I appreciate that. Yeah, and this is again the best interview I've ever been a part of, and I'm glad to say that I had the opportunity to come be interviewed by you. You know yeah, what I'm man, saying? I appreciate that ton. Yeah, yeah for That's real. Dope. I really appreciate that. It's a fact. All right, mm-hmm. so man, before I ask the last couple questions and wrap it up, yeah, is there anything else that you would like to hit? Or anything you feel like you'd like to get out, like any type of questions I could ask or anything that could lead to um, that. No, hell no, cause it, bro, there, there again, yeah, we done covered everything I could yeah. think of, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's good, bro. Uh, mm, yeah, cause the floor is yours. Like any, like, nah, cause you, there again, you, you know, you know how to keep a conversation going, and you know what to ask, and you know, like, you. 
know the key points to talk about. So, mm. shit. Yeah. Ain't nothing I can think of. The, unless you want want to know that I, I like the things that people don't really know about me is I like to skydive and I ride motorcycles and I like to go real fast. <laughs> you know, some that some that's something that most people don't know about me. Uh, if you don't know me personally, um, I got two more times to skydive with a trainer before uh, you know, like an instructor before I can jump by Re- myself. Oh, uh, tandem, tandem. Yeah, you have two more. Yeah, before you can do it by yourself. So wait, how many have you done then? I forget. I looked it up. You only got to do like three, three or four jumps. Really? Jump. Yeah, bro. Yeah. It's Damn. not that much. It's not. It's like a certain amount of hours of time. Yeah. But yeah. I know in North Carolina, at Pied, the Piedmont um, skydiving, you only got to have three times before you can jump by yourself. So I love that. And I don't. I want to do like a video or some type of like uh, documentation of it, but I don't want to do it until I'm doing it by myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a little bit more cool. Everybody jumps yeah, with somebody on their back, you know, yeah. but I want to do it with nobody on my back. That's dope. Mm-hmm. I looked into that in high school because my grandpa, he was he was a skydiving, like, instructor. Oh, Where shit. he had, I think, I he had a crazy amount of jumps where it was, he did it for so long. Yeah. He, he, was, he wasn't in the military, but he taught the military how to do it because he'd done it for so long. So, I, in high school, I, there, was, there was a time when I was, like, Dang. looking into it and shit. As doing it as a job, mm-hmm. it, it, I, I, I didn't, I, I never like had had any type of love or passion or drive for it yeah. enough to put in the the work to make it like profitable, you yeah, know? Or, right, or, right, or, right, or pursue it. I get it. But I understand. Was, yeah, that's cool so, though. That's have crazy. you done it? No, I would never have. <laughs> oh man, hell no. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try. It, I'll try it before I die. It's yeah, not something that yeah, I. It's, it's not, not something that I like. That I I feel like I need. I'll try it before I die, though. Understood. I absolutely yeah. get it. Now I I, I want to do it out here. Hopefully, I can do it enough times out here. So, God, if I'm gonna skydive anywhere on Earth, this is one of the best places to do yeah. it. So that's on my bucket list. I don't I don't care what what the hell is going yeah, that'd on. That'd be dope. Within the next year or two, I plan on. By my next birthday, I plan on skydiving out here at least once or twice. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. All right, man. So, last two things. Yeah. The, um, really the last question I have is, as we're wrapping it up, it's been great. The knowledge that I feel like you've given and the insight into your career in the industry that you work in is just, I appreciate it so much. Yeah. And if you're listening to this, I really hope that, like, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Because I fucking enjoyed having yeah. the conversation and being able to record and everything. Me too. One of the second to last question, or the last question, what I always ask is, if you had to leave the audience, whoever's watching this right now, leave that person who's watching it with one last thing, what would you leave them with? It would be, uh, don't limit yourself and don't doubt the value that you have. You got to just... Look for the value, figure it out, what it is that you know for a fact comes to you the easiest. Like for me, music comes to me with no effort. I don't got to think about it. I can just do it. Yeah. And helping people comes to me without having to think about it. I just do it. So whatever it is that you have, just don't limit yourself and just figure out the best way to do more for yourself than just a nine to five because you don't understand how that leap of faith can turn into so much more then that way you can free up your time if you have children you got more time to invest with them you have more time to invest with your loved one you have more um time to invest with you know what you personally will want to do or not do yeah you know shoot sometimes who who doesn't want to sit at home and make money and not have to necessarily put in a lot of physical labor all the time that doesn't make you a lazy person but who wants to work hard all the time you yeah, know, nobody does. I love physical labor. I like hard work, but I don't want to do it all the time. Yeah. But yeah, don't box yourself in. That's it. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. And then finally, man, um, for anybody who's listening who might be driving or anything like that, might not be able to be on their phone or whatever right now, could you say 
all your social medias and all your handles where all they can find you could you say that out loud the most active social media that you're going to find me on is instagram that's really the only social media that i have and i do it specifically because i don't want to waste all of my time scrolling looking on the apps and i don't want a lot of different distractions so i don't got twitter i don't have with all of the other shit TikTok. i don't have all of that stuff with intent but it's at coffee music k-w-a-f-i-m-u-z-i-k and you can just find me on instagram yeah yeah Yeah. well man hey i appreciate all your time tonight yes sir all the great points and knowledge and shit you gave us today um thank you for being here just giving all that to me man thank and to you whoever's having. listening to this yes i really hope if you listen to this i hope you liked it i hope you're staying healthy staying safe drinking water exercising doing what you love mm-hmm. uh, thank you for listening I hope you have a good night and once again appreciate you Quaff. Appreciate and i time, thank man. you and i'm glad to be able to come through and work with you man and uh eat grilled food mm, amen yeah have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. you, man. All right, big dog. Awesome. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, dude. That was sick. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah.